Samsung is trying really hard to come back to the PC industry. They've even been adding Galaxy to their laptop lineup just to try and maybe garner some of that brand equity from their popular phones for the newly launched laptops. Two of the latest of these laptops are the new Galaxy Book Flex and Galaxy Book Ion, which is the one I have here. Both computers are very similar, honestly, with the major exception being the form factor that maybe you could guess by the names. The Flex has a hinge to allow it to bend and has pen support, while the Ion doesn't. Because of this, though, the Ion is less expensive with similar power, battery, etc. So, Let's start with that one today, as I feel like it might appeal to more people. Now, neither of these laptops are available here in the US just yet, but they happen to be available in Korea and have been for some time, and they're basically identical. So, I went and bought one, and I figured I would try to do a complete walkthrough on it for you guys. Now, if you're not familiar with a complete walkthrough on this channel, where I try to go through every single feature I possibly can on a new device, so you guys are better prepared should you be in the market to actually go buy one. With that said, there's a lot to go through. So. Let's get started with the hardware. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that the photos of it on the internet aren't quite right. It is far less colorful than those photos would have you believe. In photos, it looks like maybe it has a similar paint job to the Note 10 with its rainbow effect, but that's just not quite the case. I'm sure this has to do with the material being magnesium instead of glass to some degree, as it does have some of this effect, but it's just much less pronounced. Now, because it's made out of that magnesium, it's super light considering the size, which is great. My only complaint about this is that that magnesium, if you didn't tell me it was magnesium, I'd have guessed it was maybe plastic. It feels a bit cheap, but again, the weight is the trade-off for that. It weighs only 2.7 pounds for the 15 inch model, which I have here. And considering the specs that we'll get to in a bit, that's pretty light. Now for the screen, we have a 13.3 inch and a 15 inch model. That screen is a QLED instead of an LCD, so we have much higher contrast ratio, deeper blacks, brighter colors, etc. It looks nice, for sure. The aspect ratio is 16 by 9, and we have small 5.2 millimeter bezels. Now above that screen, we have a 720p webcam that looks and sounds like this. Opening the lid, you'll notice we have a hinge that props up the keyboard at an angle, which is to make typing more ergonomical, but also gives the fans under the computer extra room to breathe, which helps with cooling. Under the screen is our keyboard. It's clicky enough for me to type on, and it's better than the Galaxy Book S, which I did a video on recently, which you can check out below, but it'll take some getting used to, personally. For one, it's offset. So, the keys are all shifted slightly to the left, and partially that's to make room for the proper number pad on the right. Excel users will love that they included that, I'm sure, but anyone who doesn't crave that numpad will probably be a little annoyed at it like I kind of am. At least, until you get used to it. We also have a fingerprint sensor that's actually really responsive and frankly my favorite way to authenticate into a laptop versus the Windows Hello facial recognition that some laptops use in between the number pad and the keyboard. Now, that keyboard is also backlit and unlike the Galaxy Book S, you can actually hit function and F9 to change the backlight to be brighter or dimmer, which is nice. Beneath that, we have the, thankfully, Microsoft Precision Trackpad, which if you aren't familiar, is just the new way Microsoft and Windows are handling the drivers for the trackpads on newer laptops, instead of letting each trackpad manufacturer handle them themselves. Long story short, it makes for a, funny enough, more precise trackpad, and it can use Windows gestures and other features. It's just better than not having it, and long overdue, in my opinion, for Windows. Just like the keyboard, the trackpad is also offset, so you'll have to just get used to that as well. Or not, as you can also just use a separate mouse, which it actually came with, which is kind of nice. It's not the nicest mouse, also feels a little cheap, but it's kind of cool that they included it and the tracking isn't too bad. Now, if you do use that mouse though, there's also an extra benefit on this laptop, which is that the trackpad doubles as a Qi charger, and you can use it to charge any Qi capable phone or accessory, which I think is really clever. Downside is that you can't use the trackpad, of course, while it's charging something. So you basically need that separate mouse if you want to use it while charging. That charger, by the way, is turned on and off by hitting function and F11. For ports, we have our AC adapter port, our HDMI port, our USB-C that's also Thunderbolt 3 capable, and our 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the left. On the right, we have two USB-A type 3.0 ports and a micro SD card slot that you can take out with a SIM card tool to add extra storage, which is handy as an inexpensive way to add extra space. For audio, we have AKG tuned stereo speakers. Inside this top of the line 15 inch model that I have here, we have an Intel i7-10510U 10th gen processor paired with 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and we have a one terabyte NVMe SSD. For graphics, the 15 inch model, which is 
partially the reason why I went for it over the 13 inch, has a Nvidia MX250 GPU with two gigs of memory. Now I've used another laptop a while back with this GPU and this one is similar. I can say that it at least handles some video editing in 1080p or using proxies, as long as there isn't a lot of graphics or effects added. But for my 4K and 6K RAW videos that I shoot, I can't really use it for that. Just for anyone wondering about video editing on this. Now speaking of though, here are some benchmark results for anyone curious where it stands against other laptops if you're maybe looking at it as a gamer. For connectivity, we have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0. For battery life, Samsung claims 21 hours using the 66.9 watt hour battery that's inside here. But let's do an albeit not very scientific test and see how long it lasts in a generic video playback test at 1080p on 50% brightness on its better battery recommended power setting. Now the device is capable of fast charging using the included AC adapter to give you three hours of use on 10 minutes according to Samsung. But again, let's test that with its original charger. And while we're at it, I was kind of wondering since it does have USB-C, could you power it with USB-C? And apparently by plugging in one, you can but it tells you that you need a more powerful one basically, and any of the ones that I used wouldn't work. Now for software, we have Windows 10, and on this Korean model at least, there's a decent amount of blowware pre-installed from games to booking.com, which clearly Samsung has a deal with since it's on a few of their devices that I've used, etc. But thankfully, you can easily uninstall any of these by just right-clicking and clicking on install. Now besides those apps that no one really wants, Samsung did install some apps that are pretty useful. First, we have a voice note app that allows you to take voice notes and record them here, as well as adding in notes and writing, etc. We have Samsung Note, which any user of a Samsung phone is familiar with, as it's essentially the same. It even syncs with your Samsung Note on your phone as well. Also reminiscent of Samsung phones, we have Samsung Dex, which allows you to plug in your phone into this computer to then mirror your phones, screens in a more desktop-like way on the computer's screen, and also an easier way of transferring files and photos, etc. between the two. This one I didn't expect. We have Live Message, which again is from the phones, and again allows you to draw or make notes here that then animate and turn into GIFs or even videos, depending on how you want to save them, and then you can share those with other people, even if they don't have a Samsung device. We have the Samsung Gallery, which is their photo album. Uh, again, this should also sync across your different accounts, so long as you sign in with your Samsung ID. Studio Plus, which is Samsung's basic video editing software. It isn't quite as robust as some of the ones that obviously I use professionally, etc., but it is nice as a free alternative for basic video editing. In addition to these apps, they also added in a few tools for the computer. So like a Samsung PC cleaner that allows you to clean up storage on your device. Uh, recovery, which allows you to reset the device if there's an issue. Samsung Security, which is a neat little app that actually gives you privacy folders that you can lock separately. A secret screen feature that makes it harder for people to see the screen at an angle a way of blocking apps from using your microphone or camera, as well as a feature that actually can use the webcam to take a photo of somebody when they try to log in your computer and get the password wrong and then email it to you, etc., etc. And an option for Samsung settings, which has just a few options in it to be able to change certain things about the Samsung specific hardware in the device. And there you go, that's the Galaxy Book Ion. It's available in Korea right now and is coming to the US in the quote coming months. Now I'll leave a link below to the cheapest place that I could find both models once available for anyone who wants to check them out. The starting price for the Ion in Korea though is about $1,240 and the top model, which is the one that I have here, is $2,180. Now the price in the US is unknown at the moment, but that at least gives you a good starting point. Now personally, I like that this laptop has added a lot of cool features that I kind of think of when I think of their mobile devices, like the really nice screen, the reverse Qi charging, the fast charging, um, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's actually very clever of them and, and really sets this type of a laptop apart from some of the other ones on the market. And now while I was editing this video, there was actually a leak about the US retail price. And it says that it's $12.99 for this top model that I'm using here, which if that's true, that's crazy. 
I have a hard time believing it, but if it's anywhere near closer to that price compared to the ones that I just listed, it would actually make for a very compelling enterprise laptop, especially with that number pad that I mentioned. And also for anyone that just wants that much power in a very light laptop that sells a 15 inch, really nice screen. Now you guys, hope you enjoyed that complete walkthrough trying to go through these as much as I possibly can, as in depth as I can, because again, you guys told me to. But let me know in the comments below if you think this length was good, the stuff that I put in here, there are other things you want me to do in these videos. Please let me know, always trying to improve the series. If you like this video though, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also, check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.